Good evening everyone, Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to your Friday evening update. It's been a fast week. Apologies about my absence last night. Uh, my partner in crime filled in the gap, so thank you very much. Before we start tonight, hit the like button. Tap the subscribe button if you can, and of course, tick the little bell to stay updated on all of our future content. More coming on Gravy Train, of course. Uh, I did say this week it might be a little bit delayed until next week, but there is more content on the way. If you are still interested in GT, you can find the link down below in the description with all of our other good links, Discord, Facebook, and our uh, trading view. That's the one. So anyway, BTC, where are we at? Where have we been? Today in the Discord, I did mention about this level here that we see on the supply. We have penetrated or moved through this level quite substantially now. It, uh, it really pays, it really pays to be, uh, to be thorough and it pays to wait for confirmation sometimes. So today I really did say wait for some confirmation because there's every reason that we could double top at this scenario or we could have a rejection at this level. It is still, there's still plenty of time for that. We have the negative 27 extension above us at 58,500. So we have observed somewhat of a, re of a rejection so far, but nothing substantial yet. We haven't seen a reaction that cre has created a lower low just yet, but we have seen a reaction on this level of supply so far. <clears throat> Where can I expect this to go in the next little bit? Okay, so I'm gonna draw in the most relevant level of demand that I see on the chart. which is at 54K. If we are to come down and retest this level of demand at this liquidity here, on the left-hand side, you can see it'll be support around this area too. That would be healthy for BTC, in my opinion. We did have one reaction come down and retest this level. If we even come back down here and retest it a second time for a movement to the upside, that will give BTC the momentum on the indicators. And of course, it'll give BTC the momentum just in general on the lower time frames, just to be able to push through that 58K level and create a higher high. That's the scenario that I'm looking at currently. We are looking for a pullback and we are looking for a continuation. The market is still bullish in my opinion. We have eaten away a lot of this level of supply currently. So I am looking for pullbacks and I'm looking for continuations. The continuation would be around the 60K mark if I'm to say where it would go. So 60K from here to 62K to here. We do have a level of fibs at 62,000, which corresponds nicely with the negative 61.8 extension. <clears throat> so that would be the first area for me to look for for BTC. Something happened there, don't know what, but that's okay. Uh, but that's really what I'm looking for with Bitcoin. If we don't have a substantial pullback, then a continuation is very likely. If we are to see this pullback and create a lower low, and a lower low event would be a break down below this 53K mark, then we could expect further downwards momentum, possibly testing our 50 and 61 areas at 51 and 50,000. That would be the two scenarios that I'm looking for. If we are to come back down here and make a lower low, I'd be pretty concerned because that would probably push the RSI below the 50 median level. And that would be a little bit bearish for BTC, but hey, uh, let's take it one step at a time. And if that happens, then we'll assess the market again. Anyway, let's move on, keep this short and sweet. It's already nearly 8 p.m. Melbourne time uh, on a Friday night. So I wanna get this done as quickly as possible for all you. So Ethereum in a very similar spot, but it hasn't made those, uh, those inroads in that level of supply currently. So we have got a level of supply that on the left-hand side corresponding with about 1875. We did have a rejection here on the 10th of March uh, on the four hour candles with a pretty much a tweezer top. However, we have been forming lower highs since then. We've made a lower low as well, but I'm not, taking that as a, as a substantial movement. Uh, I'm more looking at s stuff like this where we've got a channel forming or even a descending broadening wedge type scenario <clears throat> in which we could break to the upside, we could. This will really come down to BTC breaking to the upside as well. If we see BTC 
push through that level of supply and move up past 58k, it will pick up and drag ETH and a lot of the USDP, USDT pairs up with it. And we'll probably see this level be retested for a second time. If we are to see anything happen with ETH, we just missed out on our buy at the level of demand at 1725, but that is the most relevant level in my opinion, and it would still be bullish in my opinion if we get there, because our gravy train indicator is still green, and of course the market sentiment is still positively green. That would correspond nicely with the 38.2 on our Fibonacci retrace uh, for ETH. <clears throat> nice one in my opinion. I've had a little, a few. Bear with me one tick. I've had a few uh, requests, so let's go through those as well. Um, and then we'll move on to the DXY. So the first one I've had a look at, or the first one that I was requested was ADA USDT. Let's turn gravy train off for the minute. Now with ADA, I've been really looking at this level of demand down here. It is quite large, so it's, it's a little bit skewed and it's a little bit hard to follow. Let's nip it up just a touch, but we've got this level to work with. So we've had this being respected a number of times now. And in my opinion, you can only bend a stick so far until it breaks, but in the fashion of the market, like I said, the sentiment is positive. So we could expect upwards momentum. And if we are to, the swing target for me would be at $1.35 for ADA, if we are to swing up. Now on ADA, I'll be quite transparent here. I'm looking to averaging and I have been averaging for ADA. Uh, I've still got a position open. So even if we do dip down below here, I'd be looking at the liquidity levels around 90 cents. And of course, our level of demand is around 85 or 83 cents for ADA. If that does occur, that will nicely bottom out our steamroller indicator. And of course, we'll probably get a bottoming of the cloud there on our gravy train. If we do follow the liquidity to the left-hand side in this area, and that would create a decent opportunity for a swing target or a swing movement to the upside. So a market cycle to slowly create a uh, upwards momentum for Cardano. DOT is the next one. So DOT USDT. Let's go to this one here. DOT USDT. Yep. <clears throat> so DOT, let me draw in the TA. I've got a couple of alerts set from prior. Which I haven't addressed, but the TA is pretty sound. So there's two levels quite close to each other. I'd probably look at this one here to be honest. Uh, it is the closest one, but levels below us would be a DCA or would be a target for entry in my opinion as well. If we're looking for dot, dot is okay. We would be looking primarily at the 33 0.47 area for the first one, we'd be looking for 30.45 and of course 26.53 for the overall swing uh, movements for DOT. So this one here is on a significant pivot point. That's why I've got it highlighted in blue and I've got the three levels that I've identified for DOT. So to keep it transparent, I have got a personal interest at around that 26.53, but in the slower term or in the lower time frame sort of uh, span of things. I'll be looking a little bit more closely at these levels here for demand. And of course, I'd be looking for targets to the upside. So we would be looking with our Fibonacci, where are we? Trend-based fibs. Here we go. So our swing low to swing high and our retrace nets us these targets to the upside. And of course, 1618 does play a role in our Fibonacci, of course, 618 is the most common. And of course, we have been rejected on the 618 at the $38 mark so far. So that's very consistent with our uh, trend-based Fibonacci for DOT. So keep an eye on this. Um, like I said at the start, like I have been saying, the market is still, it does still have a bullish sentiment. So I'm looking to average in or, you know, look at the extremities in terms of our swing targets for an upwards swing or an upwards momentum for these uh, these USDT pairs. <clears throat> Last one I've looked at in terms of the USD pairs is Link. 
Link USDT is another one that I've been looking at, although not as closely, and I haven't got a personal investment in this one, uh, just to keep it transparent. But if I'll be looking at the extremities or looking at our levels of supply and demand, I've got a, a demand which I just drew in, and of course our supply is just above us at around that 35 mark. So we're sitting you know, roughly in between the two levels. If we are to put on if we are to come back down to these levels here, most notably 27 and of course 24, that would be healthy in my opinion uh, for the long term uh, side of things. We have been scaling up or you know moving to the upside for quite some time for Link. So giving us a cool off or giving us a little bit of a relief rally uh, you know, to really give us some downwards momentum is on the cards or is healthy in the grand scheme of things. Of course you can use the gravy train clouds as a level of support, or of course you can use our levels of demand as well for a little bit of a better you know, swing. You'd be looking for holding the trade a little bit longer, of course, looking at, you know, from like just for an example, 24.6 all the way up to 34. And if you were to hold if you were to hold that, it could take two weeks to play out, but that's a 42% swing. So looking like uh, that. That's my trading strategy, of course. I'm looking at the extremities of lower lows, of course, or you know, oversold conditions, and then trying to sell on the higher levels in terms of supplies. So going from a demand all the way to, to a supply is the aim of the game for our DCA strategy and, or our UTG uh, trading strategy. Moving on, Forex, the DXY is not a regulated, it is a regulated market, excuse me. This is not financial advice, just ideas and opinions of Team UTG. And I'll clear out some of the levels that we've got here. Let's get rid of Gravy Train for a moment. So, with the DXY, I was more so looking towards the 50 and the 61. The 61 more notably because we are at a you know, pause in the market, a very low quality level of demand. But we didn't get there, unfortunately. So we have, in fact, bounced off our 50. So if you were looking at a bounce scenario from swing low to swing high, drawing from left to right, you would be looking at 38, 50, 61 as we were. And of course, we got caught on the 50 mark for a bounce. And that turned up nicely in our level in our steamroller indicator down below there, which is quite accurate on the forex uh, on the forex side of things, or even the DXY side of things. If we are to look at levels above us for the DXY, I'd be looking at the 92.2, and that of course corresponding nicely with our swing high, which was uh, that level at around the 5th of March, which I've left on the chart currently. You can always leave Fibonacci on the chart; you don't have to move it up as price does. Fibonacci works wonders on a lot of the charts that we use. And of course, most of the time we just leave them in place because we do get respected price action uh, regardless of where they're drawn. So if we're you know, moving the price up to swing low to swing high, of course you can see the difference. It brings up our 61.8 and that is the level that we bounce from. So uh, a very nice play, even if we had our Fibonacci drawn from the previous high. But that really concludes our Friday night update. I really wanted to keep it a little bit quick and a little bit short and sharp this evening. It doesn't look that way at 13 minutes, but hey, we, we got to the end of it anyway. If you're still interested in Gravy Train, we do have our 50% discount for the first month still running. Gravy Baby is the, uh, the, the coupon code that you need to enter. You can find the link down in the description. I'm Ads from UTG. I'll see you in the Discord over the weekend and uh, have a great one. Bye for now.